Is your home or that of an older loved one filled with 50 plus years worth of stuff? This is Kinsley Turnipseed with My Other Mother. We specialize in senior move management, helping seniors transition into their next great adventure. We do this with compassion and dignity by encouraging them to keep the memories and lose the stuff. Right size, downsize, age in place, what will your legacy to your family really be? You can reach us at meetmyothermother.com. Whether you're currently a caregiver or looking down the road at the possibility of becoming one, there's a financial impact. Today on Reverse, we're talking about money. Actually, we'll talk about how not to watch it go down the drain. Welcome to the Reverse Podcast, where we talk about all things related to caregiving and senior life. I'm your host, Anna Edmonds. Today, we're going to be talking about money. And whenever anyone mentions financial planning to me, my eyes glaze over and I look for the nearest exit. So to help us along with that, I've brought in a good friend and a colleague who can probably talk about this a lot more intelligently than I can. I'm going to go ahead and just let her introduce herself. Welcome Stephanie Vokral to the podcast. Thank you. Stephanie, I've known you for a long time, but I still have a hard time explaining to everybody what exactly you do. So do that for us. Sure. I am a business owner, and I have two businesses assisting families in a transition. Critical Transitions Wealth Advisors works with families or individuals to help them solve problems while they're going through a major critical life event like retirement or loss of a spouse, or an empty nest, or caregivers. My other business has the niche of divorce financial planning. So we work with specifically women going through the transition of divorce. So here today, we're going to be talking more about the transitions, the critical wealth transition side of your business. That's right. Okay. I just have to be honest, and you already know this about me. I'm allergic to all things numbers (laughs) and math, and you're the professor of all those things. Sometimes I don't always understand these kinds of conversations, Mm -hmm. so I will be representing the lowest common denominator in the audience. I will ask questions. If I don't understand them, a lot of other people out there don't. So first of all, let me start by saying— These are conversations most of us don't like to have, period. Planning for the future, talking about money, all of that, you know, even if you do manage money very well, they're not fun conversations to have. Right. With regard to caregivers, I'm just going to ask you, as a financial planner, what are some of the financial dangers that you see for caregivers? My goodness, where do I start? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, f- first I will say normally this is a conversation that is about women. Not all the time, but most of the time caregivers are women. Yes. And so those have their own unique conversations that go along with the caregiving piece. But the biggest losses that I see are Loss of wages, number one, loss of benefits, and that includes Social Security, loss of the ability to save for their older selves, loss of experience and tenure in their own career. And so the losses are extensive. I mean, there are some studies that show that if a woman leaves the workforce for three years, that that can mean well over $300,000 for her in her career. And so it's very dangerous for caregivers to not have a plan. I will say that. So having a plan, whether it is I'm going to do this for this amount of time or making sure that, you know, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, but making sure that they've done research to understand what they're talking about when they're talking about being a caregiver and the losses that are associated with that, because it's a very damaging 
uh, a lot of times when people do choose to leave the workforce and be a caregiver. So many times people think it is just the loss of wages, and they don't think about their own personal benefits, health insurance, and they may even have a disability coverage with their employer. You know, what happens if they then, as the caregiver, get hurt? Caring for that individual, how are they going to pay for their own disability? And so really giving thought to leaving their work situation and having a plan in place for that is very critical. I don't know what to say to all that. It's just very (laughs) overwhelming. All of this is to me because as a caregiver, I didn't have the option of leaving the work. I was single. It was just me. But I knew full well that the life expectancy or that I should say the risk of death for the caregiver is so much higher for the caregiver than the person that you're caring for because it's so stressful. Yes, and that's probably one thing I failed to mention, but but it also I ha- and I I have it right here is is their the loss of their own health. Yes. It's a major issue when it comes to being a caregiver. Well, I don't hide the fact that I gained a massive amount of weight as a caregiver. Mm. I've never had that problem before in my life, but you suddenly are living the life for two people, especially yes. if the, the person you're caring for has any level of dementia. You are you are thinking for that person. You're mm-hmm. making their decisions and everything, and you put your life on hold for that person, mm-hmm. especially if it's your parent, mm-hmm. um, which is why we call this reverse. You become that person's parent, mm-hmm. and so you put your own decisions about your life on the back burner, Mm -hmm. making sure that mom is healthy and safe and content. Gosh, it brings tears to my eyes to even be having to talk about this right now and looking back because, yeah, it was, it's to, I'm left with the scars of it. Mm -hmm. It, It's very hard. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the solutions for these kinds of problems that we're talking about? The biggest one that I see people miss is really doing their homework and their research before they make that decision. I think that is the one of the biggest ways that they can avoid the unknown is to really make sure that they have looked at all of the benefits available to them that they're going to be losing and all of the benefits that are available to the person that they will be caring for. What are their military benefits? What are their group benefits? Should a home study be done to understand if there are certain items that can be added to the home? Should you consider combining your households? Is it easier to have the loved one in the home with you? Is your home easier to modify than their home? I mean, there are so many different items to think through and really getting curious and and asking good questions both to yourself and and to, you know, other family members. Have you in, asked for the assistance of you know, and I, I tread lightly here because sometimes you don't want the assistance of other family members. Yes. But, you know, like for, for me, I have three brothers. And so I'm the only girl. And so understanding the personalities of other family members that you would invite into right. that conversation and having good boundaries there, but really understanding what is the plan here and having that laid out before you make that decision is very vital to your long-term health and to finding a solution that works for for everybody involved. I feel like I can't tell you how much this validates everything I've been thinking over the last couple of years since mm-hmm. since my mom passed and mm-hmm. I was a caregiver. I can't stress enough how how much we learned in hindsight, my mm. siblings and I, that we made, and I mostly, but we, because I was the caregiver, but I had support, that you make these decisions during a crisis or in the spur of the moment, in our case, because we didn't know where to go for information. We didn't have reverse magazine or reverse podcast. I didn't know where to go for help. 
But I, just like you said, in hindsight, we should have sold my mother's house and sold my house once it was determined she was going to be moving to South Carolina and I would be her caregiver and bought a much bigger house, big enough to bring a caregiver in. And so I could still work at home and her not interfere with me. Mm -hmm. And I could still leave the home whenever I wanted to, to go run errands or whatever. Mm -hmm. It would have been cheaper. It Mm -hmm. would have been safer. Mm -hmm. But instead we spent thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars and me running to where she lived, putting out fires that I couldn't control. Not that they didn't take good care of her, but exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. When all of us could have been happier, but nobody told us what you're telling us today. Mm. And and it really, I think, you know, talking with other people who have been through this situation, and even I think what you're doing on this podcast is great because it does foster so many great conversations, and you being able to share your story can help other people. Well, let me just say, at the time, I didn't know anybody else that was Mm -hmm. doing this, nor did I have time to go seek out. I didn't know about Lisa's care connection, Mm -hmm, for example. I didn't know any of these Mm -hmm. things. And my siblings were all, you know, the closest one was um, outside of Charlotte. The rest of them are many hundreds of Mm -hmm. miles away. My sister is an elder law attorney in Virginia, and she helped with a lot of things. But the day-to-day stuff, she's not there for that, and she doesn't know South Carolina, so she can't Mm -hmm. help me weed around and find the support that I needed. Mm. So, yes, this is why the podcast and the magazine came about, because if I can help one person on their journey through an interview like this, then my job here on Earth is done as far as I'm concerned. Right. One other solution that I will mention is, you know, even finding solutions, and you said it earlier about are there ways that instead of quitting your job, you could work from home? Mm -hmm. Could you do something remotely? Could could your employer work with you from from that standpoint. And and then I think one of the biggest things that I have learned through helping families is is there are issues when you do combine households. Yes. And you have to think through that with a good elder law attorney because it can impact some of their benefits, you know. So really yes. understanding that before you and that's what I'm talking about when I say to do your research and understand how that's helpful, but Bringing, bringing some caregivers to help you have respite, oh, you yeah. know, <laughs> yes, and understanding what are some of those community resources, right. you know, for the, through the aging online. commission yes. or, or whatever, you know, are there some good resources there that that we can bring in? So I, I would say the biggest solution is doing your homework, slowing down, asking good questions really talking to people and trying to to understand. Yeah, I think the benefits was interesting, too. I was not involved in in the money side or any Mm. of that. I I was the hands-on person for Mm -hmm. my mom, and so Mm -hmm. my siblings did everything else. But my dad was a veteran, and even though he only did like four years, you know, way back, you know, with then— He had benefits as he was aging, and then my mom continued to receive, not very much, but I mean, every dime helps at this point. I never would have known to go down that rabbit hole, and if I consider myself, except when it comes to numbers, very smart. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a highly intelligent and able-to-research kind of person, but it never occurred to me to go down the veteran's benefit Mm -hmm. rabbit hole. Right, My sister was, she was sharp enough. And it is a rabbit hole. Yes. (laughs) And we're going to have the Veterans Administration on this podcast one day, more than once probably. But great, yeah. So, yeah, are there other items? I mean, benefits is huge, whether it's your health care benefits or veterans benefits, there's other different things. But um, what other kinds of things can people Tick off, like make a start making a list of things that they should be thinking about when trying to plan, you know, for their financial future. One thing that I see that when it comes to planning is the dynamic there as you're you're becoming, you know, your roles are reversing. Yes. Is and it depends on the generation. I feel like my parents are much more open to me asking questions and being involved in their finances than their parents were with them. Right. Was, my dad always would say, it's none of your business All how right, much money exactly. I make. So, so it's, Even as an adult, it's can you really, believe? Yeah, I can. <laughs> I, I mean, I have those clients. I mean, you know, we 
folks that are in their 80s and, and 90s right now remember, you know, their parents going through the Great Depression. Yes. And so you didn't talk about anything. Yes. And so we still do, we still have those folks around. Yes. So, yeah. So, um, you know, my parents, my, my grandparents, I should say, didn't talk about anything. Right. And, you know, so it is with, with this generation, which is the baby boomers. Yes. You know, as they are aging, they're much more likely to talk about things than their parents were. And so it is engaging them in conversations to start planning. And it's going with them to appointments to their financial advisor, going with them to appointments to their estate planner. And if they don't have those appointments, then asking for those appointments. You have every right to ask that. You have every right to ask questions about how your parents are invested or, you know, ask questions about fees, ask questions about, you know, documents that they have. And as that transition takes place, getting documents in place like powers of attorney, right. making sure that you're able to have that power now and be involved with your parents instead of it being like a power of attorney where something has to happen for you to – like some documents you'll have to – and I'm certainly not an attorney, but you will have to – have an event that occurs for the for you to become the power of attorney. Right. Whereas you can actually have a document where you can now be power of attorney with your parent. And that's what we did. Correct. Because yes. And it's it so wasn't helpful. being used. Right. But if my mother was suddenly supposed, yes. you know, gonna fall down the stairs right. and become unconscious or whatever, then the power of attorney just kicks in. Yeah, it was good. When when right. they needed it, it was there. Right. So that's important. It also gives you access to the money. Yes. If you're the one who is the caregiver, many times you're the one who's paying those bills. Yes. You're setting up those payment systems. And one of the things that we try to do with families, just practically speaking, is helping them get those payment systems set up. You yes. know, is it online bill pay? Is it automatic drafts? I mean, making sure that that they're proficient in ways to pay bills. I mean, right. that's very important. So my brother was the money man. He paid the yeah. bills. You yeah. know, all and he trusted me. I had a credit card and I could go to town buying me and mom whatever we needed as for her care. And he trusted me thoroughly. So anybody who has a sibling or somebody who can yes. do that and take that's a huge weight. You know, mm -hmm. I mean bills would come in the mail and I would just scan them over and say, here you go, dude. And he would pay them and rarely ask me a question. But there's also, if you don't have that, if there's not somebody in the family that you trust or can help, I know that some financial professionals or paraprofessionals, I know somebody, you can hire somebody to do that, and they don't have control of your money. They'll simply write the checks. The, what I forget what they're called. There's a name for that. We call it concierge services, mm -hmm. and in our our industry, there are people who do that, but there are trustees who do that as well. Mm -hmm. You can hire CPAs to actually be the trustee and write checks. Right. And, and yeah, they can't take your money. They no, can't do anything with it. No. They just move it around for you. Right. I find that to be a service that many times people are not using. I think maybe it's being more talked about. Um, and certainly in family offices and higher net worth families, they have, you know, most of the people in South Carolina that you're talking about day to day, they're not going to be your higher net worth person. You know, they're right, not going to. Right, we're working They people. need to be practical yeah, right. and you need practical ways to access that. And so working with mom and dad's professionals and making sure that the documents are in place for you to be able to, to work with them, practically speaking, is, right, yeah, right. is very key. Okay, that was interesting. Stephanie, we're going to take a break for a minute and hear a couple words from our sponsor and we'll be right back. Palmetto Commercial Services is an extreme cleaning company focusing on severely hoarded homes and homes identified with health and or safety risks for the occupant. If a home is too cluttered or unsanitary for a caregiver to provide proper service, PCS can help. If DSS has an open case, we can bring the home into compliance to help close the case. We help clean homes with severe pest control issues, nicotine, fire hazards, tripping hazards, and more 
Call us today at 803-479-0812. Most of us want to stay home as we age, but need assistance to do so safely. Carolina Healthcare can help. If you need support because of an injury, a cognitive impairment, or a debilitating diagnosis, Carolina Healthcare will provide a proven caregiver and a care plan tailored to your needs that includes bathing, housekeeping, medication reminders, and more. For over 35 years, Carolina Healthcare has been your award winning premier non medical in home care provider. Find out more at carolinahealthcaresc.com. Welcome back. We're talking to Stephanie Vokral, a certified financial planner who actually specializes in life transitions and planning for those. And uh, we are currently talking about some of the solutions to some of the problems caregivers face when they're trying or think they need to adjust their financial plan. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. How can your company specifically help people? If somebody picks up the phone and says, ah, I need help, <laughs> what can you do? Well, I will say most of the time when we get that call, it is usually because someone is taking over as a caregiver, and it's not that they didn't always ask good questions ahead of time or try to get involved. It's just that many times they were not allowed to. And so now it's at that emergency place where they're pulling their hair out and they're trying to figure it out. So the biggest thing is to have a family meeting, get get paperwork and documents signed so that we can be involved and talk with children or caregivers. Um, And then um, making sure we also have ways that we understand whether or not there is any kind of elder abuse going on. And this is very important because we have ways that we are very discerning to make sure that caregivers are legitimate and that they are not taking advantage of. And and that's normally not the case, especially if I'm involved. But you need professionals who are going to work with the family. And so we have a series of family meetings that we do where we ask questions and we understand what is the need, not only the need of the family, but what are the specifics of the assets that are involved? And I'll give you a very quick example There are some tools that we can use that will use equity that is in a client's home. And so you have to understand before you do that, is this a homestead that's been in in the family for generations and and it's never going to be sold and the intention is for it to go to the heirs and for it to always remain in the home? Many times you see this with... Clients who may live on the coast, you know, who sure. had a home that's been on the coast and been in the family for a long time, or a lot of land and property that go with the home. And so you want to understand that first, because if if that is the situation, you, then you really cannot use equity that's in the home m- most of the time. And so, but if the plan is nobody has any attachment to the property, and at some point in the future, everybody is just like, yeah, we don't care if, you know, dad's house stays in the family or not. Right. Um, and that house is paid for, maybe that is a source that you you want to look at. So it's really getting curious and understanding okay. the type of assets that are available to your client and then helping the family to understand and consolidate, making it simple. Um, whereas a lot of times yes. I find that the baby boomer generation, one of the ways that they thought diversifying was to have a lot of different advisors or accounts in a oh, lot really? of different places. Oh, goodness. And so the problem <laughs> with that is, is then the caregiver and people who are trying to practically pay bills and access their assets. That sounds is, horrible. <laughs> they don't know where they are and, right. and even, you know, rummaging through drawers and finding yeah. stock certificates. And it can just be a little bit of a nightmare. So a lot of times we get involved to help 
with making it more practical to actually get to those assets and advising families on well, which bucket do I take from first, you know, Mm -hmm. would it be the retirement bucket? Would it be the checking account? Would it be the investment account? You know, or maybe they don't have that. And it is just helping them to get to a good family law attorney to understand how they need to deplete their assets so they qualify for Medicaid. So, but starting with a good family meeting and understanding the scope of assets that a client would have, where those assets are, and just getting an assessment of the situation is very important. But, uh, But many times, you know, taking that first step to have a family meeting can seem a little scary to the parent. Well, I said this recently in another Another interview when that came up that sometimes those family meetings are like Thanksgiving dinner. Right. You know, it's just a big brouhaha because it's very emotional. Mm -hmm. But when you were talking about documents and everything, I remember after my dad passed, my older sister was the one living closest to my mom. And so they were rummaging through all the drawers, you Mm -hmm. know. And the things she unearthed, like my dad was well into his 70s when he died and um, she found his... I guess it was adoption papers. My, yeah, he came from Europe, you know, after the Holocaust and everything. And then his mother remarried and he wanted to be an American boy. So the stepfather adopted him. And this paperwork was just squirreled away somewhere. You know, who knows what else she unearthed? I know she was pulling her hair out. Yes, you just never know what you're going to dig up. (laughs) Oh, true. Yes. So do you have a good disaster story for us before we go? (laughs) Well, I think probably one of the worst situations I've ever seen is I actually had a a son who came in with his dad and literally had an old orange suitcase. And it was full of papers. And the son was just like, I just don't even know where to start. And so it was helping him because dad was already having dementia, helping him understand what his dad actually had and going through all of that. And, you know, (laughs) it, it was an orange, like hard suitcase that was just full of, and so there were stock certificates, there were life insurance policies, there were, and so, you know, many times you have to pay a professional like myself who knows what they're doing to help you understand what do mom and dad have, because maybe they're just, they can't even articulate it right. to you at that time. And so, you know, it takes time and it's a it's a web that you have to unwind. And oh my goodness. So I would say that we just, we have a proven process that we okay. work families through as far as helping them to, to navigate that. Better you than me. <laughs> I just, there's no way I would want to get involved in any of that stuff. <laughs> You have to be very patient. And, you know, as the caregiver, you know, when you're asking them a lot of questions, many times they don't know the answer to it. And so it is just sometimes it can be like a a mystery. You know, Google is your friend. You spend a lot of time Googling some things and even looking in state records and trying to you know, find tax map numbers. And right. I mean, it, we do a lot of interesting stuff in our office for sure to solve the problems. So. Like little detectives. Okay. Sometimes we have I to bet, be. I bet. That part's interesting. Like for forensic um, accounting, yeah. I'm not obviously into accounting, but if I was an accountant, I would be a forensic uh, accountant because yeah. I like a good a good cop and robber story. Well, I mean, you have to... Uh, we, and we refer because, okay. you know, I'm not an attorney. Right. I'm not, you know, I can't advise on legal matters. And so it's very important to have professionals that we can bring into those situations right. and being able to refer them maybe to a trust department or, you know, working with families on a solution. You have to understand long-term care and understand how it works. So if a client has a long-term care policy, understanding right. 
what it means and can they qualify now? Would they qualify? And I can't determine that many times, but we can go ahead and make the recommendation that the family get an assessment done okay. by the insurance company to see if they would qualify at okay. that time. And so sometimes it's just helping the caregiver think through what is a good next step in getting a plan in place. Well, I would like to end this on the note that I have had professional conversations with you about my own things that I'm trying to put in order. And I walk into the office like jittery. I don't want to discuss it. But I always leave feeling much more relaxed. And I don't know if that's because of you and that I know you or that just having someone there that can explain it and not make you feel ashamed of the mess that you've brought to the table or how dumb you are, you know, any of to my audience out there, I would say, don't let that stuff hold you back, whether you call right. Stephanie or anybody else. Correct. It helps to have the information. Most families, especially if you don't like finances, you don't feel proficient at it. And most people don't. Right. They're, they're going to put it on the back burner. Right. And it's going to go in the kitchen drawer or wherever, right. you know, and then when you unearth it, <laughs> you yeah. know, it. it it's and a you, disaster. And it's you a mountain. feel like yes. it's a it's a mess. I mean, yes. that's what a lot of times that's what we specialize in. But and I will say this: if we cannot help you, our goal is to help you find somebody who can. And so many times we we have to refer people out, and that's okay too. That doesn't mean that there was something wrong with you. Right. It just means that we want to make sure your questions get answered by the yes. right person. And and so many times we will bring other folks into the situation. That's the sign of a good service provider yes. when they say we're not the best ones to help you. That's right. Let me bring a third voice in for us. Right. That's... But we will never leave a client where right. they don't know who to call next. Right. I mean, right. We want to leave them better than we found them. Excellent. Well, go ahead and tell listeners how can they find you? What's the best way to contact you if they want to? I would say the best thing is visit our website. It's aswetransition.com or call the office at 803-749-7012 and we will have a conversation. Okay. Well, that wasn't as horrible as I thought it was going to be (laughs) from my side. I understood everything you were talking about. So thank you very much. You're welcome. And um, my guess is we'll have you back in the future as we talk about specifics sometimes because people will be wanting to know very specific kinds of things. So Yeah, please do. I'm always happy to come back and answer any questions. Yes. So if this if this sparks an interest, please have me back. Okay. <laughs> Maybe one time we can do it with a glass of wine because that always makes it more fun. Oh, that would be very oh, interesting. She She's Put already me on ready recording. to sign on. <laughs> Okay. Well, thanks again, Stephanie. Stephanie Vokral from Critical Transitions Wealth Advisors. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. The Reverse Podcast is written and produced by the F Suite LLC, all rights reserved. Our audio engineer is Andrew Hayworth. Thank you for listening. 